This is a picture taken from the Atacama Desert in Chile. This is one way to locate the Celestial South Pole. You uh, first identify the Southern Cross in the sky and then you draw a line from the cross and extend it four times, uh, approximately four times as shown in the picture and that will point you to the Celestial South Pole. This is another picture from KwaZulu Natal in South Africa and you can see here a slightly different method of locating the Celestial South Pole. Basically you locate the South Cross and then you draw a line through the cross and then you locate two stars uh, usually called the pointers, draw a line between them and then from the middle of that line draw a line that's 90 degrees on that line and you will see that the line from the Southern Cross and the line from the pointers they meet and that's the location of the Celestial South Pole. And here's a picture from the Warren Bungle uh, ranges in Australia and like in the previous picture and this is a way to locate the Celestial South Pole. This uh, picture is taken from a video that shows the movement of the stars around the Celestial South Pole. So I'll play a short clip of that and see if you can see the Southern Cross and the pointers as they appear above the trees on the left. So this is the most popular flat earth map, at least currently. And I've marked the places where we had the uh, photos and the video of uh, the Southern Cross and the Celestial South Pole. And of course there are a lot of things uh, that doesn't match reality with this map. Uh, the shape of the countries and continents for one. But the most troublesome thing, if you will, is that if this were reality, we wouldn't agree on where South is. Because if you remember from the video from Australia, you had the Southern Cross and the pointers pointing to the Celestial South Pole. So that if you use the sextant, it would give you the latitude and it would give you the direction south if you wanted to go south. And you also saw that the stars, when you did the time-lapse uh, video of it, it rotated around a central point. This means that someone in Australia claiming that south is this way, it wouldn't agree with someone in South Africa seeing the same thing, same observation, but claiming south is this way, and likewise if you were in Chile. And you could argue that, okay, so the stars move with, with the clock, so that uh, at night time the stars would have moved so that you could find the south in South Africa a certain point and it then moved so that you could find the south in Chile and you kind of would find some way to make all of these agree but if you noticed in the video um, the stars weren't moving you know east or west during the night for the time-lapse video they weren't kind of rolling around the rim here so that someone in South Africa would see the same thing at night and then so that someone in Chile would see the same thing at night. So 
on a flat earth, um, there's a huge disagreement in where south is. On the globe, um, you don't have the problem uh, that you have on a flat earth map. Because in South Africa here, where the image is from, south will be just above here. You would kind of point this way, aiming at the celestial south pole. And the same from Australia, and the same from Chile. And they would all agree on where south is. I know this is fairly obvious, um, but anyway, <laughs> here it is, there it is. Just as for the Polaris video, we'll see that assuming that navigation with the sextant works uh, on the southern hemisphere, using the Southern Cross to find the Celestial South Pole. And that will give you uh, the latitude. So we see that the angles that you would get measuring with the sextant doesn't match the real world. We see that uh, for the Amundsen Scott Station at Antarctica. Uh, it's a pretty good match if we assume that the stars are 6,000 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. However, for Wellington, New Zealand, we see that it's off. And for Lima in Peru, we see that it's off. Uh, just gonna quick try to remedy that by adjusting the height of, or the distance from the Earth surface to the stars. Let's start with Lima. Okay, we see that if the stars are around 2,000 kilometers above the surface of the Earth, uh, we're starting to get somewhere with Lima. But we see that <coughs> all the other latitudes are way off. So let's try find it for Wellington. Okay. So if the stars are around 5,000 kilometers above the surface of the Earth, we see that we're close uh, for Wellington. Uh, around 4,500 and 5,000. Anyway, we see that you will never get the correct latitude for all three places. So this is um, how this works on the globe. Uh, we see first and foremost that if we assume that the stars are close to the surface of the Earth, uh, the globe model doesn't work. Um, so the, the Southern Cross uh, is pointing to the Celestial South Pole. And I've written Sigma Octantis here, since it's a star that is very close to the celestial south pole. Obviously this doesn't work if the stars are very close. But if we assume, which the measurements seems to indicate, that the stars are very, 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 very far away, we get this. And we see that the angles we get, if we take a sextant, level it with the surface, point it towards the south, celestial south pole, we get the correct angles. For Lima, Wellington, and the Amundsen Scott Station. 
So this works.